All right. Uh, hi. Yeah. If you have any questions, um, you know, type them out or shout them out. So uh, I don't have too, too many people join yet, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get going here. So I kind of added my agenda to sort of review the first assignment um, and then also look at the, the next assignment, program assignment that's due on um, Friday here for our unit two here. So. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe I can talk a little bit about the make build system. So there's a couple of things I know that, that people got hung up with on a thing or two. So uh, although anybody that's looking for, um, there's, there's a lot of good material on this MIT course here um, about things like build systems and revision control and using the shell and things. So you know, if you got the time, I really recommend kind of checking out those uh, uh, videos on YouTube of those classes. So very good stuff in there. Um, so yeah, I want to say one or two things about assignment one, just uh, so that everybody, um, you know, uh, uh, knows about a couple of things. So when I returned back your assignment one, I gave you a, um, a file called assignment one dash um, evaluation dot MD. This dot MDs are markdown files. So um, if you if you want to look at that, I mean it's just a plain text file. It uses um, a type of markup language called markdown. So it's, it's a markup language like HTML. The, the, these MD files are becoming very um, common for uh, documentation inside of projects, like uh, inside of repositories and things. So nowadays you'll see most documentation files like readmes and things, they'll use this markdown and, and other stuff. So anyway, if you, if you want to view that, I mean, you'd have, to, you'd have to pull it down and put it into a um, plain text editor. So you could bring it up into, you know, like Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you normally use. So I, I've got an example one downloaded here. So, so it is just, um, really, it's just plain text. Um, with some special things like um, pounds to represent, um, you know, level one headers, pound pound for level two, and um, it's got some markup for tables. So these are all tables here, um, and markup for bullet point lists and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I mean, this class isn't really about that, but I thought, well, one thing I thought I'd show you is um, in, in a lot of editors nowadays, you can actually render your markup. So markup is really meant to be a, uh, a language that you compile into your actual document. So you can actually compile markdown documents into HTML or PDFs or things like that. So you can get a preview by, I think it's, um, if, if you right click on there under view in Visual Studio Code, um, you can um, open preview. Um, so yes, yeah, Control Shift V. If you want to see what this uh, rendering looks like. So, anyway, so, so this will actually render the, the markdown into tables and, um, and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, I mean, part of the reasons why you have to use the submission system is because a large portion of the assignments are going to be automatically graded by a grading system. So if you don't exactly use the file that you get as a result of doing the make submit, um, your file might not be runnable in here. Right. So another thing is, is you really do need to go and read the comments. So um, I might not always give you comments on execution or style, uh, but if I do, um, I might ask you to correct things. So I might not have taken off points in this assignment, uh, but, but if I do make a comment about something that you need to request, you need to correct for style or whatever, um, you know, you, you should correct that in the next assignment. So, I mean, I, I will often kind of look back on my previous evaluations and if, if somebody keeps making the same mistake and not fixing um, something that I direct them to in the comments, I'll start taking points off until, until they see that. So, so anyway, that's what these uh, evaluation files are. Um, um, that you'll get where you'll get the 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 majority the the uh, the the more detailed kind of comments and the more detailed results of me trying to run trying to compile um, and run the tests on your code and also there's some style checking and things like that um, in there as well so um, so um, and again you know uh, 
um, if you have questions, um, just um, shout them out about this. Or I'm going to get I'm going to talk about the second assignment. I'm going to try to keep this to about ten or fifteen minutes here, reviewing some of the things for the first assignment, and then maybe we'll talk about. I'll, I'll try and talk a little bit about the second assignment then as well. So, um, so a couple things. So, so yeah, as, uh, as, as some people have found out. Um, you do have to, you, you can do your builds um, and um, um, tests inside of Visual Studio. I had hooks for those. You should, should be able to do them inside of other um, development environments like Atom and whatever, if you, if you set up the same kinds of things. Um, but you do have to do the submit from the command line. Um, So when it comes down to the final submit, you do have to, to open up a terminal, change into your directory, um, and do your final make submit. Well, and, and another thing um, that I wanted to talk about, so yeah, I mean, you know, but, but most, uh, so at this point, I've gotten about 90 some percent of people have turned in a good um, assignment over all the sections I have of COSC 2336. So hopefully everybody, most everybody then has, has kind of gotten past this point and, and knows the basics then of how you do this to make a submission and get it submitted for the assignments and things. So um, one thing that maybe I'll mention, um, I'll do this from in here. So So, control shift C, we'll clean here. Um, for all these assignments, we're using, uh, th this test file uses um, uh, a unit test framework called Catch. Um, it's relatively simple, but um, as some people have seen, um, it does have kind of one big drawback, which is more than um, a little annoying, and that the, the Catch framework is, uses what are known as C++ templates uh, to do all of this work. So really all this stuff is implemented as, as C++ templates that we'll learn a little bit about in this class near the end of the class. Um, but uh, they, they can be notoriously, they, um, uh, they, they can cause a lot of performance issues to get a template compiled. Um, and you see that in, in this case for all of our assignments. So whenever you like, when you have, whenever you have to recompile the, uh, the the file that has these unit tests in it, so in this case it was the assignment one test.cpp, um, you'll notice that it takes a long time. Um, and at least two people that I've been helping with their dev box were complaining about performance issues, but um, it I I'm pretty certain it turned out that they weren't really having performance issues. It's just that. Um, uh, you know, they were coming in here and it seemed to take a, a long time to rebuild. Uh, and that is true, you know, so um, even on my system here, which is pretty snappy, so I do have it. Uh, I am running in a virtual dev box like uh, you were probably using, uh, but I'm running it with a few extra resources. So I think I've got it bumped up to eight gigabytes of memory and uh, two or three CPUs for my virtual machine. Uh, but it will still take, you know, 15, 20 seconds, uh, maybe longer to compile this um, unit test. So. so that's normal. So, but what I'm getting at, though, is that the, the build system, uh, which, which is based on using this, this tool called Make, only build, rebuilds the file that needs to be built that are out of date, okay? So once you build your test, so if you uncomment out your tests, like the first test case, and you, and you build it, um, normally after that, you're not gonna be editing or making changes to the assignment one test. So your normal workflow would be to, to be making changes in other files that aren't, that, that, that don't include the uh, unit test catch framework. So in that case, you know, if I, if I wanted to make a change over in my assignment one functions, and if I wanted to rebuild, as long as you don't do it clean, if you just rebuild, um, it won't have to rebuild the assignment one test. It'll only have to rebuild my assignment one functions and then link that back in together to create the test and the debug, right? So it, but in short, it'll be 
relatively quick to do that. So your normal workflow, except for the very first time when you have to rebuild your tests, when you're just modifying um, code, um, your actual code for the assignments, um, you know, you'll, you'll make a modification, you'll save, um, and you'll build Control Shift B, um, and, and it should compile, you know, within seconds, right? So that way, and build, and then you can run your tests um, relatively quickly. So, so the normal cycle is, you, know, you shouldn't be doing a clean, except for, you know, if, if you're having some weird problems, you wanna to get to a clean, a clean slate, or maybe at the beginning of the day, you might wanna start off with a clean uh, build. Uh, but otherwise, you know, you're, you're just gonna be editing, um, saving, building, oops and testing, you know, and iterating through that um, to try things out. So, so yeah, here, since I changed the uh, initialization of my sum, I'm going to be failing my test. I could go back up here and look at my first test that's failing and so on. So, correct that, save, rebuild, um, and then um, run the tests. Um, Sometimes, I don't know if anybody has noticed this or not, you sometimes you'll get this clock skew detected. So normally that shouldn't be causing a problem, but I haven't 100% figured out um, where that comes from. So, but, um, but I think you, can, you usually don't have to worry about that if you do see those um, issues. So. so any questions about that so far? That was one of the things I think I discussed a little bit. Uh, I, I should go back and look at my assignments. I'm not certain if I discussed that, uh, if I posted that in, or sorry, in, in my announcements. Um, I should probably go back and make certain that uh, people kind of understand that. So, um, but, um, you know, so, so the basic idea though, it's, so just to say a little bit more about Make, um, you know, Make is a, what's known as a build tool. Um, and it's, it's an old tool um, and it's not really, useful for really big enterprise level projects, right? So people that are doing serious code or, or you know, for things that are meant for production are probably going to use some other different build tool, even for a C or C++ project. Make was kind of originally created for building um, C and C++ project, well, C projects before C++. Um, but it, it, it's still used a lot and it's still a really good tool for small and medium sized code. Um, um, small and medium sized projects um, like our assignments for this class. Again, if you're interested in you could open up the make file, although the bulk of, of the actual rules for the builds are down here or included two levels up in the include directory. So if you go back up to the top, uh, if you really want to see the real rules, if you go looking to include at the top of the directory and look at this make file.inc, um, that's where kind of all these make rules are if, if you're ever interested in learning a little bit about make and how it works. So, and again, that those videos, um, MIT, the, there's one about build systems and they use make as examples. So it's a really good, um, really good kind of thing to work through or, or to watch if, if you have a chance. So, um, so yeah, I mean, another thing, you know, do make certain that you are using the build system that I gave you guys for the dev box. So um, for example, um, the build system is set up using this, this make system so that certain kinds of war warnings are treated as errors, right? So if you submitted code like this, where you weren't initializing your variable um, and you tried to do a build, um, if your build system is set up correctly, um, you'll get, uh, it's actually really a warning, but because of the compiler flags, we tell it to treat these kinds of warnings as errors. Um, and um, so it won't, it won't, um, it will refuse to compile unless you fix this, you know, so this is a common problem uh, using C code that, of trying to use a variable before you initialize it. So it can potentially have um, garbage in it when you do that. So uh, using the debugger, that's that's a good uh, question, and uh, maybe uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that for five minutes here. So because um, uh, I would like to show that as well. Um, I don't think I have a really good example of that in any of the videos that I have posted right now. I should probably make a, a, a five or ten minute video about using the debugger. So you know, I mean, I suspect that for ninety percent of the assignments 
you probably, once you get in the flow of using these, these unit tests, you don't really need the debugger that much. So, so if you get the idea of, of you know, you, you make a change um, and you rebuild it and then you run your test and then you go find your first failing test case. And that's often enough information. But if you are stuck on a, a bug, you know, it, it, that's another thing as new programmers, you, are, you should get comfortable and learn how to use a good symbolic debugger. And you can do that with our, um, um, our assignments here. So um, like, I've, like, like I've shown you um, on, on the builds here, um, um, there are actually two things that are built uh, for you. So you get one executable called test, which links in together the like assignment one test.cpp file, uh, which is meant for you to run to use the unit test. But you get another executable created called, um, 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 what's it called? Um, um, run or something like that. Um, we'll see here once it finishes um, building here, right? So, um, um, I'll come back to that. So yeah, again, as usual, it'll take a while to do that. So if, if you want to run the debugger, um, and I'll show this in Visual Studio Code here. Uh, first of all, what you have to do is um, the, the second executable uses the main that's found in assignment one main.cpp. So let's say, bring that over here. Let's say um, I was having a bug in, um, Um, in my calculate means that I wanted to um, that I wanted to check out here. Okay, um, so what you would you would you would need to make some modifications on the main function. So if I want to debug calculate mean, you'd have to go to your uh, assignment whatever main.cpp and and actually call your function, right? So if um, if I in this case I'm going to be failing the first unit test if I leave this initialization bad like this. So uh, for me, if I was um, failing this very first test like this, I would just um, I, I would put in code so I could do exactly the same call, function call, but then I could run it in the debugger to step through it, right? So, so we might change it so that we're going to call or calculate mean to, to um, call our function with the array with a single value, a uh, single value in the array. So size of one and, and this array X with value three in it, right? So uh, I think my build's done here. So yeah, back to this. Um, yeah, it builds the, the test executable, which runs the unit test, and it run and it tests the debug, and it creates the debug unit executable, which you can use to run a debugger, right? So again, this is just an executable, you can run it. So um, it just compiled with the code before I uncommented things in there. So it wasn't actually calling calculate mean. But, uh, but yeah, if we change it, so it calls calculate mean, then I can compile. Um, so uh, let's make certain everything builds here, control shift B. So then it, um, it ran my debugger. Right, or it, it compiled my debugger when I when I built it, um, and and we could run the debugger from the command line, um, and, and you could actually use a um, command line debugger. Um, so so in Visual Studio Code, we're using the the GDB debugger to do this. Um, so I'm not going to show running it the debugger from the command line like this, but um, when I run that. Um, I was expecting it to come back with the mean value of, uh, of three there. Um, yeah, and it came back with uh, um, uh, zero. Did I rebuild it yet? So anyway, so let, let's check, see what's happening um, on that there. So um, inside here, I'm gonna have to remember. So I think it's, you can say run, so F5 or just start debugging. And it should start running the debugger for you inside of Visual Studio Code, assuming everything's set up correctly for us. So let's try that. So if we start the debugger, so it, it's, it's um, set up to use that, um, that 
that compiled debug um, uh, program as the debugger. And you notice when you run the debugger, it, it, it stops for you. So I didn't have to set any breakpoints. It, it stops um, at the very first line of the main that it's debugging in here. So, and then again, um, so I won't go in kind of all the details. Um, it, it's got pretty good hooks. Um, in fact, like I was trying to say, it actually runs the GNU GDB debugger by default um, for this C, C++ project. So you can actually type in, you can get the full power of the, the GDB debugger. So you can, you can type in um, um, debugging uh, commands down here. So um, oh, I'm, I probably haven't defined this variable yet, but um, anyway, but, but you can use, uh, you've got bug uh, buttons for the basic kinds of things like stepping over, stepping through, stepping in. So, and, and over on the left here, you've got um, your, your call stack and you've got your local variables. So let, let's step a little bit here. So if we step over um, after I've created my array and my local variable called mean, uh, we can see we've got the array over here, size one. Uh, you can even open up and see that it's got the value three at index zero and, and the mean was initialized to a value zero. Oh, I, I can see my bug here. My bug is because I'm, saving the result into a double, into an int uh, instead of a double, even though my function is returning a double. Any, anyway, uh, and then, you know, so you can step in, so, so um, F11 or, or use this to step into it. Uh, and then now we've jumped over and we're stepping through our calculate mean function here. So step over. And then, yeah, here I'm about ready to return. So I can see that my sum ended up being four. Um, and um, although after I return this, it'll divide by one, it should be returning four. So I'm surprised that I don't get a result of four here. Uh, so after we return back, yeah, we have a mean of four. So I don't know why it was showing zero when I ran it from the command line, but, uh, but here it's gonna print out uh, the incorrect result of four though. Um, so here, when, it, when stuff goes to your output terminal, so this is the debug console, but you should be able to see the actual output over, over here on the terminal down here. So, all right. Then you can stop and continue or restart the debugger. And you can set breakpoints. Um, again, you can, you can use all the command line GDB commands to do these, but uh, the, the simplest way to set a breakpoint, so let's, let's go ahead and stop the debugger. Um, and let's, let's say I wanted to explicitly set a breakpoint, so we stop inside of my loop there. So if, if you click over on the left side of the gutter, you'll get a red mark, and, and that'll set a breakpoint um, in your debugger, which you should be able to see yeah, down here on breakpoints. Um, and we can run it again, F5, or, um, or um, run start debugging. So, um, so yeah, again, it, it always stops there, although I guess I could turn off that breakpoint, but yeah, let's continue on from there and see if it hits my breakpoint in my loop here, which it should, because my array is of size one, so it should go in here one time to try and sum that up. So uh, let's continue, and then, yeah, and then we're there, so. All right, so that's kind of the basics of the debugger. It's a very good tool to know how to use Does that, uh, um, that help uh, any any kind of more details you might want about the debugger. So yeah, so the yeah, so the I mean the main trick of, on that though is um, yeah if you want to use it you do have to go in um, and modify your the the assignment whatever main. Um, so that you're actually calling your function. So you have to do a little bit of setup, but once you get that in there, then you can debug whichever particular function or, or class or whatever it is that you're um, trying to work on on your assignment. Since all, all of the files for the assignment are, are linked together, um, both into the test executable to run the unit test, and they're all linked together into the uh, debug executable, so you can run debugging um, sessions with it. So. Um, all right. So I think I, I think it was mostly it. I probably want to go ahead and get to maybe look at assignment two here. See if there are any questions about that. Um,
So there's maybe one more thing um, before I move on. Um, I mean, I did get one or two people do something like this. I just kind of wanted to point this out. This, this is, um, uh, again, I'm looking at our um, announcements in our class here. I mostly wanted to point this out, not to um, pick on, on, on students that might have done this. I don't think I took any points off for this. But this is a good illustration of one of the things that we're going to be trying to learn in this, in this class. So it, one of the things that you had to do for the um, calculate standard deviation function is, um, you know, you explicitly, uh, you know, I was trying to get you to practice using reusing functions. So, you know, part of the, um, the algorithm that I gave for, that you were supposed to implement for calculating the standard deviation was you had to first calculate the mean on the values and then sum up the squared differences, okay? So anyway, I mean, you, you could, some people did this, they were calling, I mean, they were correctly reusing the calculate mean function, but they were calling it inside of the loop, right? So why is that bad? Well, because, well, I mean, it's, it's bad in performance with, performance um, wise, or in uh, what we call the analysis of algorithms, uh, which is one of the topics we'll have in this class, because, um, this loop executes in time. So if my array is of size n, uh, the statements inside of this loop in my calculate standard deviation is going to execute in time. But calculate mean itself also has a loop that executes in time to, to simply sum up the values, right? So that ends up mean, mean that, that you call calculate mean in times um, and it runs a loop that performs in iteration, so you end up with what's known as a big O of n squared algorithm, or, or n times n. Okay, um, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, if you're if you're calculating the standard deviation of arrays with hundreds or even thousands or tens of thousands of values, but if you had an array with a billion values in it, and if you compared the performance of this to the performance where you just ca call calculate mean once and save that result in a local variable, and then have the loop um, calculating the, the, the sum of the square of the differences between those two things, right? Um, this would be noticeably faster uh, when n is very large, because n squared, uh, having to perform n squared operations is much, much bigger than having to only do you know the do the loop n times once and then followed it by doing the loop n times again um, if n is really big like a billion or something like that so anyway something to note that was kind of um, a a good preview of some of the stuff we'll get about in the cup into a couple of weeks here we'll start talking more about um, algorithm or algorithmic complexity and some things like that. So. All right. Um, oh, okay. Well, um, also, uh, let me point this out quickly as well. So, I mean, I do encourage people to look at the posted solutions um, um, and also make certain that you try and read all the announcements and stuff. Um, coming up pretty quickly, it's going to be important that you understand the, the, all the different uses of const to for for constants um, in um, the C plus plus language, right? So here in in the um, solution that I posted, um, oh, maybe I didn't. Uh, hopefully, in the actual solution that I posted, um, I had declared uh, the array as a constant integer array for both calculate mean and calculate standard deviation. If I didn't, then sorry, I got I'll, I'll go back and check my uh, solution there. Um, but um, so to get that to compile, I'd have to have it be consistent between the signature in the header file um, and the actual um, signature in the um, actual implementation file. So go ahead and change both of those. So the difference on that, so that should compile now fine the same way. Um, 
although I might have to do a make clean because um, it was still linking in with a file that was compiled without that being non-constant. So let's do a, let's do a make clean and then rebuild it. So anyway, what this is doing here, let's probably put my um, implementation over here. So the difference between those is that um, this is a declaration to the C language, C++ language, that this parameter is going to remain constant. Okay, so remember part of last week's um, lectures is that arrays um, are passed in by reference, by default. Um, whereas normal variables like the, the in here are passed in by value, so a copy is made. And that's made, I think I talked about this in my videos, um, that's done for arrays for efficiency reasons, performance reasons. Um, you know, again, you, you might be trying to pass in an array that's really big, has millions or trillions of values, so if you had to make a copy, um, there'd be a big performance hit. So I mean, that's one of the reasons why, by default, arrays are passed in by reference. So just, just the memory address um, of, of the arrays passed in, if you're trying to pass in arrays to functions in C and C++. But that means that, um, uh, that if I make a, a change to a value in the array, like in calculate mean, I could have done something like say, um, this was one of your quiz questions. I could have done something like try and put the uh, mean uh, into the zeroth value of the array. Um, like that, right? And if I did that, after I returned from calling this function, um, the, whatever was in the index zero of x would be replaced by the mean now, right? And maybe that's what, what you want to do. But uh, notice um, already the, I've got my IntelliSense set up right now, so I'm getting um, a problem on that. Um, uh, not a very good message, but it's, it's saying something like the expression must be a mod must be a modifiable L value. Okay, um, and what that means in kind of computer speak here is that I, I had guaranteed that I wouldn't make any modifications to this by declaring this as a constant parameter, right? But I've got code in here that's actually going to make a modification to it, so that's illegal. I'm breaking, so it's a, so yeah. I mean, if I actually try to compile that, uh, the compile will fail. Um, uh, with an error about um, assignment of, that's a little bit easier of an error message to understand, assignment of read-only location, right? So anyway, that, that's kind of what those do. Um, so, and that's important because lots of times, you know, the class, the, the, this week we talk about classes and structures. Those also get passed in by um, reference by default, again, for performance reasons. But lots of times, you're just passing them into a function to use. So it's good to make this guarantee that I won't actually modify the data in my class or my structure or my array if I'm not modifying that. So, so that tells you, you know, that this function is, is not performing side effects and, and making modifications into that array or that class or whatever. Anyway, so we'll run across that more there, using constant parameters into functions like that. Um, uh, um, so. Okay, let's see if we rebuild. All right, so um, yeah, so let, let me go ahead and move on to assignment two here. Um, just see if there's any questions about, um, about that from anybody. So usually on these Wednesday so usually, I mean, usually what I want is Monday sessions. I kind of do more of the review of the previous assignment from Friday and Wednesday sections. Then we have more time to talk about the, the, the assignment for this current week. So. so for assignment two, um, So, yeah, so for this one, um, hopefully this is the one that I had 
had posted for you guys for class. Let me, let me just double check this so I don't I go off and talk about a different assignment because um, this one changed a little bit recently. Um, let's pull up the PDF that I've got actually posted for you guys for the class here. So. Um, oh, um, hmm, I don't have the attachments on there. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, assuming I've got my repository up to date here. This should be the one that you guys are seeing. If, if any of, the, of you are in, in the, um, um, that are in my class here, um, if you've started on the assignment two, um, let me know. I'll double check that to make certain that this is the one that's in there. So, um, um, so yeah, what you're supposed to be doing for this is, is we're going to be the, the, one of the, the big things about this week is, um, you know, is, is some practice with using C++ classes. So I asked you to, to create um, a C++ class um, or, or actually to implement some member functions of a C++ class, uh, a set class. Okay. So, um, so to get you started, so you're, you're supposed to start with a member function called is empty. So sets are mathematical. So it's the idea of um, um, you can add items to a set, right? So this, this is a mathematical set. You can add items to a set, um, but the set, you know, if I add two to the set of items, and we're just keeping a set of integers, I believe, if I remember right. Um, and if you add two to the set, then two is there, but it, and, and the set only has each item in the set represented one time, right? So, so, so two is either in the set or not in the set, and so on, right? So, So here's the header file that you guys should have had to start with. Um, and here's the source file. So for this assignment, um, I had actually already given you the full declaration of the set class. So, so again, the, um, what's known as the um, declaration of the class is split from the actual implementation of the member functions, okay? So, so here, um, where we declare the class, all we're doing is say, you know, given the name of the class, um, we're giving the, um, the private member variables of the class, so the, the, the set privately keeps track of the size, the number of items that are currently in the set, um, and we keep an array of integers to represent which items are actually in the set. All right. Um, so, and in this case, we're not going to worry about dynamic memory allocation, which I think we talk about next week or the week after next. So in this case, we're only going to hard code it so that we uh, can only represent sets of up to 100 integers. Okay. So, um, and our, we can do things like add items to the set, remove items from the set, um, get the set size, check if the set is empty or not, and so on, right? So for the first uh, unit test, so yeah, and you probably won't have to uncomment any of these because since I gave you all the declarations, um, and if you look in the actual implementation, set.cpp, the, the functions are all there as well, they're just all mostly empty or they're just doing stub actions, okay? So, um, so uh, actually this might be the solution here. So you uh, might've already, um, uh, might've scrolled there and showed you a little bit of the solution to some of the things there. Um, so yeah, your first task is So just a second, let me, let me check something real quick here. Um, so 
So yeah, I think I have the solution in here for these, um, but I just re-pulled it from the um, repository. Um, Uh, okay, yeah, so I've, I've already been saying some things that aren't quite right, so um, There uh, so let me try that again so so you won't quite and, and you will have some stuff commented out when you start initially uh, Yeah, everything commented out. Okay, so um, Okay, so let me start on that again. So uh, you won't quite have everything that I was showing you there um, Like before, you'll have uh, your test case commented out. Um, I do give you a set class. Uh, the um, um, that's all right. That that uh, people saw that, so I didn't see everything yet. But um, uh, but yeah, I did want to get people. I, I did want to kind of show like the first task here anyway. Um, so. Just to, to complete that, so what you would first do is you would start by uncommenting this. Um, so you first have to, what I suggest you do is you first just do a um, a stub implementation of is empty that returns true, so you can pass the first test. Okay, so what I, what I mean by that, so so initially, if you have a set S, it should start off as being created uh, with the empty set. So, um, so this first check, uh, this first uh, unit test is just checking that is empty returns true because an initial set before you add any items into it is empty by default when, it, when it's first created. Okay, so um, oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, So if I uncommented that and uh, rebuilt, um, it wouldn't be able to build because we don't have the is empty. Um, so I'm gonna kind of skip, uh, jump and, and, and get this stuff started here. So uh, I, the only thing I do actually give you on the assignment is a constructor. So what the constructor should be doing is setting set size to zero. Um, and, and that's all it does, right? So our is empty method, um, is kind of what's known as a accessor method or it's an informational method um, that's supposed to return a boolean result true or false all right um, and and it doesn't take any parameters as input so i mean you, you can ask any set whether it is empty or not um, the the set already knows what items are are or are not in the set. It, it, that's what the class, the purpose of the class is. So it's just keeping track of those, um, and, and it will tell you whether it's empty or not, right? So that's that's what the is empty is supposed to do. Um, so. Um, if you have watched the videos for doing classes and class member functions this um, for, for this uh, assignment so, so oh and you should try and make certain you find the uh, I did give you the function documentation so this is this is the, the, the is empty member function should go underneath the documentation for check if set is empty so that's that's where is empty goes right so again like like I showed you kind of the first week you ought to start by doing Copy and paste in the prototype. Get rid of the semicolon there. Uh, one difference is though that this is this is a member function of the set class. So everything that's a member function of the set class, you have to put set colon colon in front of it if you are putting the member function implementation separate from the um, the declaration. Okay. So again, though, you can think of this in the header file as the prototype or the signature of the member function. Uh, and then over here in the .cpp files where we're going to put the implementation, right? And like I, was, like I suggested in the um, um, documentation, you should start by um, 
just put in the stub of returning true so you can get past this first test case, okay? So, and, and then uh, here, since there's a lot of different uh, unit tests, uh, you will have to end up recompiling the assignment to tests more often um, than before. So, um, but anyway, if, if you do that, um, you should be able to compile it. Um, and it should run and actually, it'll actually pass the, the test here because it's expecting true and we're returning true, right? And um, um, and yeah, that, that is kind of the first function while we're waiting for that to, to finish off here. Um, that was the first task I kind of told you. And I, I, I suggested you do the same thing for the get set size, just su stub it out to return zero. So initially the, the set is empty and initially has zero items. So that's uh, an easy thing to do. Uh, and then starting with the third test case. Um, so oh, we didn't compile there. So um, So we didn't compile there because um, it's saying that we've got some tests. Oh, and assignment two main uh, didn't compile there um, because I had, uh, I must have some things uncommented. Oh, again, this you, sh you guys shouldn't be getting those items. Um, I must have modified this for um, uh, doing some debugging at some point. So I want to get it to us compiling here, but but yeah, you shouldn't have that problem in your main because the main was probably empty to begin with. Um, so so yeah, anyway, that that should compile, I think. Um, So like the second test, the, the second task that I talked about was to just stub out the get set size to return zero so that you can get this test passing. Um, and then the third one, um, I, I probably tell you to stub out the um, contains item to always return false um, because initially the set is, is empty. So if you ask if it contains any particular item before you put any items in there, um, um, it should return it's empty. Okay, so that finally compiled there. Um, and then, yeah, if we run it, um, um, it'll run that. So, so yeah, if, if you do what I suggest in the assignment description, so, so you do the is empty um, and just return, always return true, stub it out, and then you get your set size um, and just have it return zero. So this passes and then you put in a stub for contains items that always returns false, and that will pass. Um, and, and you can even stub out the beginning of the string method to just return like a, a, this kind of a string. So um, this will pass. And then at that point, um, you'll have to go back and then start getting things to work. Um, so that uh, at this point, once you add like the item five, um, it's no longer true that the um, um, the set is empty. So then you'll have to go back and actually um, implement the is empty here. So I think some people joined from my next class here. I'm about ready to stop this class so I can start the CSC, the, the, my operating systems uh, class here. So, um, all right. So yeah, I think I do want to wrap up for the 2336 class here. Um, um, kind of went through quickly at the end here, but uh, was there any kind of questions about the assignment uh, two here? Um, or, or hopefully that gets you guys going. Anybody that was watching or who watches this afterwards, so. All right, um, yeah, with that, um, I'm going to stop the recording here. 
Um, I'm actually going to end this section. So if you came for the next class, you might have to rejoin here. But um, uh,